November 5, 2010. It was in the Wall Street Journal. I want to read you something. But you have to stay with me to the end of this. Because I have a little surprise for you at the end of this. Now, I won't read the whole thing, but I'll read a good big chunk of it. Remember, I have a point to make. I always do. Tired of politicians who refuse to listen. Americans who previously... Oh, by the way, this was, I think I said, November 2010. Tired of politicians who refuse to listen. Americans who previously were not involved or minimally involved in the political process are now helping to drive it. This is after the massive Tea Party-driven victory in 2010 that dislodged, you know, Pelosi. While their backgrounds are as diverse as the country itself, their message to Washington is the same. Government leaders are servants of the people. The people are not servants of their government. The members of the 112th Congress must heed this message. If there is to be any hope of repairing these shattered bonds of trust between the American people and their elected leaders. And that begins with the Speaker of the House, who as leader of the institution must lead by example. Accordingly, there are several steps I believe the next Speaker should be prepared to take immediately. Among them, among them no earmarks. Earmarks have become a symbol of a broken Washington and an entire lobbying industry has been created around them. The Speaker of the House shouldn't use that power of the office to raid the federal treasury for pork barrel projects. To the contrary, the Speaker should be an advocate for ending the current earmark process and should adhere to a personal no earmarks policy that stands as an example for all members of Congress to follow. Let Americans read bills before they are brought to a vote. The Speaker of the House should not allow any bill to come to a vote that has not been posted publicly online for at least three days. That is 72 hours. Members of Congress and the American people must have the opportunity to read it. Similarly, the Speaker shall insist, or should insist, that every bill include a clause citing where in the Constitution Congress has given the power to pass it. Bills that can't pass this test shouldn't get a vote. House Republicans' new governing agenda should be a pledge to America, calls for the Speaker to implement such reforms immediately. No more comprehensive bills. The next Speaker should put an end to so-called comprehensive bills with thousands of pages of legislative text that make it easy to hide spending projects and job-killing policies. President Obama's massive stimulus and health care bills written behind closed doors with minimal public scrutiny were the last straw for many Americans. The American people are not well served by comprehensive and they are rightly suspicious of that adjective. No more bills written behind closed doors in the Speaker's office. Bills should be written by legislators in committee in plain public view. Issues should be advanced one at a time, and the Speaker should place an emphasis on smaller, more focused legislation that is properly scrutinized, constitutionally sound, and consistent with Americans' demand for a less costly, less intrusive government. The Speaker of the House, like all members of Congress, is a servant of the American people. The individual entrusted with that high honor and responsibility should act accordingly. A Speaker's mission should be to consolidate should not be should not be to consolidate power to the speaker's office but rather to ensure that elected officials uphold their oath to defend the constitution and the american people we serve if a speaker carries out that mission successfully the result should be legislation that better reflects the considerable challenges we face as a nation the american people deserve a majority in congress that listens to the people focuses on their priorities and honors their demands for smaller more accountable government accountability starts at the top in the office of the speaker right mr boehner that's you you wrote that november 5 2010 you wrote that four years and a few months ago and you have broken every damn one of your pledges including the earmarks with that massive spending bill last month. You wrote this in the pages of the Wall Street Journal, John Boehner, and you have lied through your teeth to the American people. Squish, spineless establishment. That's you. 
Mark Levin.